What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy James. Sometimes you queue up on the ladder and, you know, you think that you're going to be going with a top archer civilization and you forget that you put your shield up. We've all been there. And so you can see here in this team game, right, I'm here as Lithuanians on the flank. Now, normally you might be thinking, oh, man, I don't have a good flank civ. What am I doing? And I think all of us actually got, I think all of us got some kind of odd sieves on the flank, but our opponents at least, right, have pretty good flank sieves. Tatters ain't perfect. Uh, meanwhile, we got Goss on our flank. Anyways, I'll get into some of that, but I thought, well, isn't this just a really nice opportunity to make a build order video? And so that's exactly what I did because... The thing about Lithuanians, you start off with 150 food, and you can see here, taking a look at the TC, we got a lot of villagers queued up. So in this situation, instead of panicking, right, you kind of have two decisions. One, you can decide to play it off meta, right? You can say, I'm going to go off meta, I'm going to go for maybe some kind of like tower shenanigans, etc. Or, right, you can play it meta for a little while and then think about how you're going to transition and think about using your advantages Right, that you have as a civilization, your benefit here. The extra 150 food for Lithuanians is a really nice early game bonus that I think has a lot more utility for them than simply going scouts. I mean, obviously it's a really nice fuel for a scout rush. I'll zoom out about here, right? Okay, we're fond of some things. All right, it's a really nice fuel for a scout rush, but you don't need it exactly, right? You don't need it for a scout rush, you know, just purely for that. It's also something that can help your minute arms rush. And yes, if you want to play something like straight archers, right? Now, while you want to play straight archers with Lithuanians as an opening, even if you're not stuck on the flank in a team game and, you know, you're just trying to play your role in the team. Well, you know, one thing you might do, right, you know, is you might think, well, if your opponent's going to go minute arms and you might want to counter them with early archers of your own, right? Maybe you're thinking about doing a night switch in Castle Age and you want to get some archers out in the field and then transition into knights later. Whatever it is you're going to do, Pikachu, right? You just go ahead and you try to get it done. So, as you can see right here, this is a pretty decent level game, right? A lot of clean Dark Ages, not a lot of auto time or anything like that yet. And basically what we're doing here is we're doing a similar normal, normal build, right? And this is one of the things I want to emphasize is that there's not a lot of deviation that you need to do right you know we're going the four on wood everything is very very standard so far right you can see now we're getting four on berries and this is the point where you start to modify things a little bit right once you have that four on berries you want to send resources to <laughs> some fun <laughs> this is my first time watching this game our opponents are chatting pretty funny with each other um, you want to start sending those villagers to food, right? Again, very, very simple. It's kind of like doing a scout rush build, like 20 pop scouts, except you're going to get four on wood, and you're going to do it the exact same way. Meanwhile, right, scouting the opponent. And let's talk about the opponents, right? So, I'm trying to provide a little bit of a cast of this game. I know that we actually have Burgundians in the pocket, which is you know, a pretty decent pocket. We have a goth player on the front, on the flank. Okay, okay, not bad, not bad. And... You know, for the opponents, we have a Tatter Flank, right? We have a Berber Pocket, which is quite good. And they have a Vietnamese Flank. So they probably have the... Given the flanks are kind of funky here, right? Um, probably, for, you know, for our civilization, Goths and Lithuanians, they probably have the better civilization combination. But, right? Right? I know, as you can see, I've been scouting it out. I know I'm up against Tatters in the flank. So this is where you want to start putting that information together, right? As you can see, right, we're already up, right? One second out of time, no big deal, right? And we're getting our archers going, right? We have, we're going to get two to gold, and then we're getting the house up. Because, again, we're pop capped right now. So when you're pop capped with this, right, when you're doing that 20 pop build, you want to get a villager out from under your TC to bring that... To, to bring that house into creation, right? To build that house. You want to do that a little early, right? So just kind of emphasizing that, right? So you can see, boom, we're getting the barracks down and we're getting after it. Meanwhile, right, as you can see, right? 
we have our villagers on. Let's just go. Let's go to. Perfect, right? We have 10 on wood, as you can see, right? And now we have three on gold. We're getting our barracks up. So you can see here, right? This should be a pretty clean build. And now we're just putting a second villager out here. Because you always want two villagers that are making your production buildings when you click up. Um, there's basically two reasons for this uh, in my mind. One is that you want your buildings up faster so you can start you can start producing faster. The other reason is that if you only have one villager producing, well, you put yourself in a really difficult situation if a scout comes and attacks it because you might not be able to get that building up. And as you can see, right, now what we're doing, getting villagers out to gold, very good. This range is gonna come up, boom, we have enough for a second archery range, right? So this is not something where you're just thinking about, oh, I only have the wood for one archery range and I gotta delay, you know, I gotta delay archery production, you know, something like that. No, we're just doing this straight up. And now we're also trying to get walled up. One of the things I know, right, as as the Lithuanian player, right, with Tatars, who are just hitting the next age right now, I know that they don't really have an eco bonus that propels them early game. And this is one of the reasons why, being in this situation, I chose to actually play this a bit more meta. Because on the flank, I feel pretty comfortable about being able to get out to an early production advantage and playing archers for a little while, right? Because we're going to run away a bit. Because what I want to do is I want to keep the pressure on, big league. I want to keep it on. And we can play crossbows and castle age. Crossbows and castle age now, right? Um, very strong, fully upgraded with Lithuanians. We're going to need to transition eventually. But opening, right? We can play this thing pretty pretty normal. Use our, our really nice dark age eco bonus to take some map control, take some tempo, get walled up, and we'll figure out the rest later. And as you can see, right, that's as this guy, uh, you know, auto villager hotkey. Yep, okay, he's gonna go back now, right? Sometimes your auto villager hotkey can uh, not give you what you need exactly. As we see a couple scouts up here, but hey, we should be able to take them pretty good. And you can see, right, we do have our wood upgrade, which is really nice for us here. Taking care of that scout, bada boom, bada bing, okay. And if you take a look, right, we're, Again, thinking about this on the flank, right? We have our blacksmith up. You can see, right? We're, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to get our food up. You know, a bit too many on gold here, right? I think at some point I'm gonna realize this. Yep, perfect. Okay, right? Realize that. Okay, so we have a lot of gold in the queue now, so we're not gonna have any trouble producing archers. But you know, we got to get to fletching. So we're gonna try to get those food. We're gonna try to get those farms down, so we can do exactly that. Now, if you take a look at some other places in the map. Our uh, Berber player is getting a lot, has a lot of farms, and it looks like our Burgundian player, uh, who has gone really greedy with the eco upgrades, right? Getting get a lot of farm out of them, has delayed farms just a bit, and it's getting them seeded now. So pretty interesting, I gotta say here. Meanwhile, we have some fighting going on, right? That Berber player only has two scouts, and here we are working together, uh, good teammates, right? And we're keeping this open. Hanging out a little bit on the outside, right? I wanted to let my scout player go actually kind of scout that out and see what was in there first. Because again, there could be a bunch of scouts from our green player that are coming. We don't want to get our armies trapped here. But right now that we know what's going on, we're going to go ahead and take care of that. So meanwhile, the fighting is getting a little intense here, right? A little intense. And you can see, boom, fletching is going to come in. Uh, we probably could have got fletching a little early. And if we'd have been a bit more... A bit more diligent about getting those farms down. That would have been something that would have been good for us here. But now, and this is basically the build, right? Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going through this video, right? Because just to you know talk about team game play a little bit, because you can see right what we're doing here. You know, again, thinking about the position that we're in, and this could be a position that you're in. You know, if you find yourself in the flank with Lithuanians, right? The thing I think to take away from all this here is that it's really okay to play meta even if you don't have a civilization that really is the best civ for that because look at all the damage that we're getting right 28 vils right we're getting damage we can always transition to something else later on the flank if we need to but honestly we have crossbows here that are good enough to get us really into the castle age if we need to and we have the farms that we're really keeping our opponent down here and so uh you know, attacking this flank, right? And meanwhile, 
right? The Berber player here is not really contributing that much to the battle. Probably trying to get to Castle Age. Yeah, going to try to just fast castle and really letting his opponent uh, take it on the chin here, right? Meanwhile, as we have a lot of archers being produced, right? A lot of mobility here. And, you know, again, playing as a team, right? We're going to go. We're going to go try to find damage, right? And as uh, he's going to come up here. I wonder if we see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see him. We see him. I think, I think it, yeah, we separate the army at this point. But eventually, right, those archers there, we don't want to take that fight. And there's a lot more damage to be gained in this area, right? I mean, these villagers here are just sitting ducks, right? And meanwhile, right, and this says something about the Burgundian eco. Our teammates making scouts up at the same time as, uh, actually a little bit before, than the, or the green player here, the Berber player. This just goes to show you what a good eco bonus can do for you, right? As these scouts are kind of, they're coming over, they're helping a little bit, but honestly, they're kind of taking it on the chin here. And meanwhile, we have so much army out here in the field, right? We're at 18 archers here. Again, you know, this is a kind of, this is a kind of moment where we can end the game fairly quickly here. And that's exactly what we, how we want to think about playing this right now. And thinking about the setup for a transition, I think what you probably need to do in this scenario is go ahead, right, and, you know, think about what your unit comp is, probably play crossbows in the castle age for a little while, and then I think try to transition to something else with Lithuanians. You could go cav archers, um, you could try and go, I mean, honestly, one thing to think about with Lithuanians, it might not, I don't know, I don't think that would be the best, but even think about... Um, you know, cav archers or hand cannoners if you want to play range, or honestly, just go ahead and transition to knights in the flank, right? If you have the eco to do it, you can. The, tr the trick will just be getting the numbers up, um, and that could be a little difficult, but hey, you know, we're on the way up here, right? And just to take a look at, see what kind of, the, see what the idle time looks like for us. Right, so, you know, we had a little bit of idle time, heavy fighting on the flank, as you can see, right? But the flanks here, fighting a lot, that's where you're, you're going to get some very natural idle time uh, in uh, in those scenarios. So, as you can see, the other flank as well. Um, now, our flank on our side, doing really well uh, in terms of keeping his economy going. And just trying to take a look. Yeah, but, uh, but there's the thing, not a ton of fighting on that side, right? Our flank is where it's really been the hottest and the heaviest. And look, we're getting a lot, lot, lot of kills. A ton of kills. We have archers over here. And we're about to be up to the next age. And lots of resources. Easy to get crossbow, bodkin. Getting thumb ring here even, right? This is one of these moments where it's a, a time that I really want to close this thing out. Especially knowing there's going to be knights out in the field, right? As you can see, right, the knights are in, but our opponents do go ahead and call the GG. Uh, they're going to decide to give it up here, and yeah, we're going to see that come into play. With the army, of course, it's going to get cleaned up, but, you know, they've already given up. So, um, a really, I mean, look, dropping a well-played, very nice from our opponent there, as the game should end here momentarily. Okay. So, right, really, really, uh, really nice job uh, from, you know, my teammate to come in, work together, and again, the point of this, the point of this video, uh, despite the, uh, uh, the archers being gone in the field at this point, you know, we, we do have more queued up, sometimes you lose army, um, but we did a ton of damage, right, he's down to 24 bills, and uh, we're sitting fairly pretty, so... The point here, right, is that, you know, when you're on the flank, you can use this. But this is actually a pretty nice build to do with Lithuanians, even in 1v1s. Don't be afraid to actually play non-standard with them as well. You don't just need to go scouts. Um, archers are definitely something you can up open up with early as Lithuanians. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. And going to be putting some more videos out here. If you really like the build order videos that I do and you find them useful, definitely let me know in the in the comment section. I'll try to do more of them if that's something that y'all are interested in. Um, my last couple of build order videos, I think got a, got a solid amount of views. And so I'm, 
And so build orders for me have not always been my highest view count, but I've actually been some of my highest comment count and people telling me about how they've used the build. So I highly encourage you, if you do use this build, let me know how it goes uh, in the comment section. With that being said, Jimmy Jim 59 and I'll see you guys out there on the ladder. Peace.